I believe that cell phones will have holographic capabilities and that this technology will come from Africa. Holograms were first discovered by a physicist by the name of Dennis Gabel. This is an unexpected um, discovery as it occurred while he was researching into improving electron microscopes. But the advancements of the hologram did not progress until the discovery of the laser. Advanced in photochemical processes to produce high quality display holograms were later achieved by a, a man named Nicholas J. Phillips. Holograms can be seen in movies such as Star Trek and Star Wars where a holographic image is produced and the people are able to interact and communicate with the hologram. But unlike Star Wars, we don't have the force. <laughs> in our day and age, holograms are produced in the following way. Scattering light from an object or a set of objects falls on the recording medium. A second light, known as the reference beam, illuminates the recording medium. This causes interference between the two beams. The result, a light field of seemingly random pattern of varying intensities, which is the hologram. This is done through the use of laser, or in a darkened room, carefully directed light. There, two-dimensional surfaces produce absolutely precise three-dimensional images, which is the object. Now, taking a look at history, one can see that things have gone from big to small. In the sense that at the birth of this technology, it was big, bulky, and very hard and complicated for the public to use. But as time moved on, and as time progressed, the technology came, became more refined and more complex, but so much easier for us to use. For example, in the 1930s, the first commercial television was released, and it used a CRT, or a cathode ray tube, as a method of display. Weighed 15 or more kilograms, and the viewing screen was the size of that of a laptop. Now, back then, that was large. <laughs> Today, you can buy a TV that is slim and sexy. Better image <laughs> and audio a much larger viewing screen, and weighed so much less. Today, if you had to buy a TV that weighed the same as those in the past, the TV would probably be two meters large. But looking at cell phones, one can see the technological advances of the handheld cell phone. Yes, it has gotten smaller, but it has gotten so much more complicated and complex, being able to play music, surf the internet. Cell phones today can be bought with a camera, taking both still and video recordings. You can also buy a cell phone that has a radio or can play games. In 1980, Apple released their first Macintosh computer. They boasted that they had a calendar. Today, you can buy a cell phone with a calendar, calculator. It can tell time. You can even program your cell phone to be your gate remote, your TV remote, or even a universal remote for your entire household. This brings the idea. Integrating both holographic and that of a cellular mobile technology together. This is both an interesting idea and a great step in telecommunication. Just think, a caller will dial the receiver's number as usual, and will select whether hologrammed or not. Once selected, the cell phone will start to record the caller's information from body to gesture to body movement. Once recorded and would still be recording, this information will be sent to the receiver. Once the receiver answers, a full-scale 3D holographic image will be projected, or a scaled-down version, according to the receiver's preference is projected next in. Then constant transfer of information between the caller, the receiver, and back will be sent about the caller's body movement and that of the camera. 
Now, I believe that this technology currently is in its infancy, but I strongly believe that this technology will reach its full potential here within African borders. Just think, we have the market. Africa is one of the largest mobile, cellular mobile industries in the world, with one of the largest cell phone users in the world as well. We also have the fastest growing telecommunications industry in the world. So clearly, one can see that the money for its development is there. But Africa also has the entrepreneurial mindset, not only to sell and market the product, but also to see its development into a more complicated and complex displaying media, <laughs> making HD TVs look retro. This technology will have so many uses for Africa in our day and age. Teachers will be able to teach classes all the way from home. <laughs> Better yet, Cambridge, UCT scientists, mathematicians, and doctors will be able to teach classes in a rural area, giving world-class education to an informal settlement. <laughs> Girls who have never been to school before will be able to attend classes for the first time just by simply having a holographic cell phone. Think of this. You have a classroom of 30 children being taught by a NASA scientist. But none of the children are, are there. They're all being holographically projected to the classroom, and the NASA scientist projected all the way to them in their respective homes in Togo or Zambia. But this technology can also be used in government. Presidents, ministers will be able to meet the people without having to travel to all these different locations, saving money, our taxes. The UN will be able to assemble more often and talk about the important and pressing issues of our day and age. This technology can also be used in medicine. Patients will be scanned, and a 3D holographic image will be sent to the doctor for better diagnosis. And this will happen while the doctor and patient are kilometers away from each other. 3D holographic images can be sent from a smaller hospital of an internal organ to better determine the procedure for surgery or how to better medicate this diagnosed problem. In Africa, we know traveling can be complicated and expensive. But now with this holographic technology, a businessman all the way in Algeria will be able to meet and, ha and attend a board meeting in Zimbabwe and make agreements face to face. <laughs> Africa also needs to do business with Africa. With this technology, a man in Addis Ababa will be able to meet a salesman here in South Africa based in Kozuna Natal selling bananas. And this salesman will be able to show him the produce through this holographic technology between this long distance. This is what I see for Africa. Mika had a vision to see Africa connected with the rest of the world through telecommunication. And he saw this through. Now is the time. We will not wait for the rest of the world. This is our dream, our ambition. We have our vision to see this legacy being made, to see it through, to see it through for our people, to see it through for Africa. Thank you. <laughs>